everybody. Welcome back to Eggs the Podcast. Today's special guest is Michael Aries, Senior Advisor at McIlvaney Precious Metals. Michael, how are you? Well, I'm good. How are you doing today, guys? Absolutely great. great. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks so much for, for making time up. to visit. Yeah, yeah no worries. Uh, why don't you uh, give us a quick overview of who you are, how you got into your field, and what mm-hmm. you do? Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. Well, I work for McIlvaney Precious Metals, uh, like you said, as a senior advisor. So I help folks uh, understand the the reasons for owning gold and silver, um, actually physically owning precious metals and helping folks invest that way to uh, protect their assets. And uh, I've been doing this for a long time, I think 14 years now. And I've known about this company uh, really since I was a kid. My parents got their newsletter and went to some of their conferences and, and started buying precious metals even before Y2K. And it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, you want to protect your savings. You want to have something real and, and something that's not just a, a number on a computer screen and, and just kind of seeing the way the world is heading. Um, just have something that's, uh, that's safe, that, that's always going to be there. So um, just kind of been following these markets for a long time, really been investing in gold and silver myself for 25 years. So I've seen the different cycles these markets go through. I've seen some of the strategies that we've employed, uh, play out um, even even to be able to get myself uh, free ounces of gold and silver through different arbitrage trades. So we can talk about that at some point, but just have a lot of experience uh, with these markets and kind of have always enjoyed um, an alternative perspective on on the news and on the world and kind of seeing what's what's really going on behind the scenes. And uh, yeah, and just trying to uh, make sense of uh, the market and the economy. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And I think that's actually one of the more, you know, re- we, I guess one of the bigger reasons why I'm really excited to visit with you today is because, you know, I, our world has changed a lot since we talked to somebody who was in this field mm-hmm. and uh, who has, you know, looked at this as a different asset class versus, you know, just typical, you know, financial buying stock or whatever. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, so anyway, I think it'll be really great to, uh, to catch up and learn a little bit about sort of the state of the market today. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, uh, we've, we've covered a lot of topics as far as in, investing goes, a lot of real estate, um, we've had financial planners mm-hmm. on, we've never had anyone that actually goes into depth on, you know, <laughs> investing in gold and silver and, and other commodities. Can you yeah. maybe break down an, an entry level guide to getting started? Like if, if I had mm-hmm. five grand and I wanted to throw into, into, you know, precious metals, what would be yeah. a good, good way to start? Well, let me just say it this way. I think everyone needs to own precious metals. Everyone should have some. So, you know, I know you, you work with entrepreneurs and and CEOs and high level folks and, you know, building your business is one thing when you have assets and you want to invest and protect it. um, You know, there's all different categories, but precious metals needs to be one piece of the pie. And frankly, everyone needs to own it because it's money. And we, tend to think of the dollar as money, but the dollar is not money. Our dollar bills are a currency that are constantly being inflated and devalued by our central bank. So you can have a depreciating currency as part of your savings, or you can have real money like gold and silver, which do go up over time with inflation and they maintain their purchasing power. So, you know, when it, when it comes to precious metals, it's just, it's something everyone should have. It's not ignore this topic. It's not, you know, have zero gold and silver. They just sit there. They don't make sense. No, everyone needs to have some. If you use the dollar, have some. So to your question, Mike, when you're talking about having $5,000, say that you want to put into gold and silver. So we recommend having physical precious metals. So actually owning coins and bars that you can hold in your hand. Um, It is possible to store it at a depository if you want someone else to keep it safe for you, or you take it at home and keep it in a safe and keep it secure. Um, But that's something real and tangible that you can hold on to that has intrinsic value in and of itself. And there's no, okay, big fancy term here, but you have, you know, big listeners. There's no counterparty risk. Okay. No counterparty risk. If you have stocks, there is someone else in between you and your money that they have to do their job and keep their promises. And if they don't, you don't get your value. When you have a, a gold coin or a silver coin, that has value in and of itself. No one has to do anything. You have money. You have real value. And there's no risk from someone else um, not holding up their end of the bargain. So physical precious metals is the way to own it. So again, to your question, it's buying 
coins and bars and taking delivery of them and keeping them safe and know that that money is not going anywhere. It's not going to disappear in the blink of an eye. That's real value. And it will maintain purchasing power with inflation. Uh, I would say too, silver is a little bit better buy than gold right now. It's got more catch up to do. So for your 5,000, maybe put more than half of it into silver, maybe put 3,000 into silver and 2,000 into gold, something like that. And just have more exposure to silver since I think it's going to give us a little better price performance. So, um, the current value on gold right now, I just Googled it, is uh, mm-hmm. 2400 2468 right now is what it's yep. sitting at. When mm-hmm. I actually, uh, a few years ago, I went up to Nome and I went gold mining with a friend um, yeah. on a <laughs> on a dredge. And so I was yeah. really in the in the gold market as far as like excited about, oh my goodness, it's going for 1800 an ounce. And, and then it <laughs> yep. jumped up to 1900 And in three mm-hmm. years, it's, it's jumped up to 2400 So... Mm-hmm. Um, is that, is that out of the norm to have a $500 increase like that? Or is that, I mean, is it pretty much peaked? Do you think? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it's peaked. I think it could actually go higher from here. Like eight to $10,000 an ounce would not be crazy. It would not be, um, completely wild. So, um, yeah, moves like that in gold every few years are not abnormal. It was, $300 $300 an ounce 20 years ago. So now, now that we're up to over $2,000 an ounce, it is going up over time uh, as the dollar is going down. And, and these kind of moves are not abnormal. And silver has gone up um, just as much as well. But in that same time frame, I mean, silver was in the mid-teens and now it's 30. So silver's doubled in price. Uh, so you're, you're talking about um, pretty significant moves, but I don't think they're done yet. Uh, I don't think they're quite done yet. Um, if we look at really how much money we've printed just out of thin air and what gold tends to do historically over time, if we look at previous bull markets and see how much gold caught up to and accounted for the money supply, um, it's not even close yet. It's not even close yet. Today and today's dollars and all the trillions of extra liquidity we have, you know, $10,000 gold would be something similar to what it's done in the past. Um, $2,500 is not the peak, not even close. Interesting. Yeah, no, it, it is interesting. And I wanted to ask too, so like as, as somebody, I mean, I've only dabbled in this a little bit. I've got maybe, mm-hmm. I don't know, 150 ounces or something of silver. Yeah. And um, so, but I, I, a couple of years ago, I started to get into it a little bit. I had sold a big project and I had a little extra cash and I was like, where can I invest some of these things? And mm-hmm. so um, both my, my father and my stepfather were, you know, uh, precious metals guys. And so they both, mm-hmm. you know, did a lot of that and they suggested, Hey, you know, you should try and get in precious metals if you could. And yeah. At my price point, I couldn't really afford, or at least in my mind, it didn't seem like I could get into gold. Like it's mm-hmm. just, you know, even at, you know, $2,000 an ounce or whatever it was then mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know, maybe some of it has to do with sort of the intangible or, or making things feel a certain way, but it's like, I can only buy that little tiny coin of gold, Yeah. but yeah. I could get this little stack of silver. So it feels mm-hmm. like I have something, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so, but what I discovered or what I found, and, and maybe you can help me understand this, and maybe it just has more to do with sort of, I guess, consumer buying of, of gold and silver mm-hmm. is all the silver I bought, I basically bought a little above spot. Everything mm-hmm. I would go to sell, like if I went to a local pawnbroker or something to try and cash something out is like below spot. Mm-hmm. So if you're losing on both ends of the equation, how do you actually make money with something like silver? Uh, because that percentage uh, above and below spot has absolutely been dwarfed by the market move in silver, um, just completely dwarfed. So, you know, let's say you bought a few years ago when silver was $20 an ounce. Yeah, maybe you had to pay $22 for a silver coin. And if you had sold it back the next day, you would have gotten 19 for it. Well, The reason you're buying silver is to hold on to it for the long term, to let this trend play out that we've been on. We've been in a bull market for 20 years and it hasn't hit its exhaustion peak yet. So you're hanging on to it. You want to see where this thing's going. Now that it's $30 an ounce, that that spread, those costs you paid don't matter. You're up, you know, 40, 50 percent on your silver. So who cares? You know, you've made money in the market. So yes, with physical silver, there's a cost to it. The spot price you see online is generally where just like raw bullion, raw mining supply is traded out on the futures market. And you're going to have to pay a little over spot to buy a physical coin once that mining supply is refined and fabricated into a pure, like tradable product. Um, and when you're selling it back, the wholesale market's going to give you something less because they're they're having to buy it back and warehouse it and, and then do something with it. So um, that's typical with physical metals, but the market moves we've seen here, um, you know, usually 
overcome those costs by quite a bit. And so you want to have it, you want to hang on to it, you want to pay that cost to do that, take advantage of the gains, but you have the safety factor in between as well, where you've got your money in a real form. It's not um, just, you know, sitting in the ether somewhere and, and uh, you, you know, something you can't touch. Yeah. So no, I think that's great insight. Thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how important is, um, you know, the, the actual coin versus, you know, your silverware versus your, you know, just a, a block mm-hmm. of silver. Does it, is it better to invest in coins because they could be more valuable as a coin or is mm-hmm. it, um, you know, better? It, it just doesn't matter just as long as you have, and, and also quality, uh, the purity of the mm-hmm. silver versus like the purity of the gold. Um, can you maybe break that kind of down for us? So, you know, yeah, what you should it be does getting. matter. It, it does absolutely matter. You want to buy investment grade coins or bars. So buying from a reputable dealer, getting product from reputable mints and basically getting a pure, you know, uh, 99.9% pure coin or bar that is recognizable, that is trusted, that is common. Um, you know, and back to Ryan's question, not paying too much over spot for that. There's all kinds of places where you can get overcharged or you can, get talked into a fancy product that costs more. You want to pay as little over spot as possible and get as many ounces as possible. Um, So just, you know, buying whatever product is, is the least expensive, but at the same time, yes, getting an investment grade coin or bar to where it's tradable as is it's recognizable. It's pure. It's, it's stamped. It's, it's, you know, so silver coins, gold coins, there's a different variety of them that, that we help people get, but um, something that is, that is recognizable and tradable as is, is better silverware. I mean that you just have to send to a uh, refiner and have it melted down and, get whatever silver content is out of that minus their fees for doing so. Whereas having a silver coin, um, something like this, you know, it's like, Oh, you don't need to do anything with it. It's stamped. It says it's, you know, um, however many ounces of nine, nine, nine fine silver. It's like, here, I can sell this for whatever the silver market's going for. I can trade it with someone for whatever they'll give me for silver. So that's, that's what you want to get. So, um, I'll just use an example I did a few years ago when, Mm -hmm. when COVID hit, there was, um, over the same year, there was a a release of, um, of national coins that the America, the beautiful, uh, the mint put out and one of them Mm -hmm. had a bat on it Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it's kind of morbid. It's a year that Corbin (laughs) came and COVID came out and and it's a coin with a bat on it. Now (laughs) I went a little bit above and beyond and I got uh-huh. a, a five ounce uncirculated yeah. mm-hmm. coin that's got the bat on it. Yeah. Yeah. And, I like those America, the beautiful coins. They're cool. And so, yes, you know, it's five ounces of, of silver. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But does the significance of a, of something like that uh, or like a misprint, or mm-hmm. obviously there's coins that are really valuable because of misprints. Mm-hmm. Do you guys dabble in that and and go after the collective market, or are you just on the pure raw ounce per you know thirty bucks? Uh, we do both. Um, we actually specialize in collectible coins too, um, more more than most places too. But it's a very specific type of market. So the coin you're talking about, not a collectible. Um, you know, in a hundred so- years it might be. That's that was maybe, my... <laughs> may, maybe in a hundred years. Yeah. So if you if you paid any extra to get that America the Beautiful coin, that's fine. I like them. They're cool. You know, get one if you like it, but don't invest in silver that way. Don't buy a bunch of those. Buy you know the the least expensive bullion coins you can get. Just one ounce silver rounds. You know, one hundred ounce silver bars. Just get as many ounces as you can. Something like that. Yeah. Have it have it for fun. Have it to keep. Um, but that's not where you're building ounces. That's not your main silver investment. Um, there are collectible coins. We, we um, actually specialize, not just dabble in, but we specialize in the collectible coin market as well. So that is another opportunity. It tends to be coins that are 100 years old or more um, that have been graded by some of the professional grading services. And you really need someone who has expertise in that market to where they can say, okay, here's a coin that has a low population. There's not a lot of them that have survived. Here's one that's in a good grade. This actually deserves, you know, a a collectible premium. This actually is a rare coin. You know, there's a lot of places that'll sell 100 year old coins and call them collectibles, but it might be a common one. It might be one that there's, you know, 
uh, millions of because there were a lot of them made. So even though they're old, they're not really that special. So um, getting collectible coins, you want to get good advice on that. And most modern stuff that you can buy, like the American Beautiful coin, is not going to be a collectible. There are places that will say it is, but it's not. Um, it's not old enough, rare enough, special enough um, to be anything that is collectible. So, um, so we can help folks that are interested in anything that is rare collectible. Um, but generally, I say get, get uh, modern bullion, you know, least expensive ounces you can, build up ounces, and just own a portion of your portfolio in physical precious metals. Maybe it's 10%, maybe it's 20%. I wouldn't go less than 10% because the precious metals are going to have a huge move here. And it's the one thing that is just foundational for your wealth that never goes away or goes to zero. So have a decent foundation. You know, we're not heading into a world that looks like everything's going to be great on the horizon. No, we have wars overseas. We have uh, potential, you know, recession, market crash is coming. We have no strong political leadership. Like there's no good solutions on the horizon. We might have to get through five plus years of seeing where this mess is going to lead us. So with that uncertainty, you want to have a decent foundation in something that is real and that never goes away. Um, so. So if you're putting 10% of your portfolio mm -hmm. into precious metals, how does that mm -hmm. work as far as, you know, uncle Sam taxes, mm -hmm. all the, all the crap that we mm -hmm. hate in, probably the reason why we want to invest in precious metal <laughs> can you uh is, is how does yeah. that work <laughs> there, there there is capital gains tax on precious metals so just like with stocks bonds you know rental properties you're going to pay capital gains tax if you sell it for a profit down the road so um, that is still there that is still part of it um, i guess my thinking is well you still keep the rest of your gain you might as well have some gain that's not completely private. You're not going to not pay capital gains tax, um, but you still have a real tangible asset in the meantime that's portable and liquid and safe. Um, it's a good complement to, to real estate. Real estate gives you cash flow and it's tangible. Gold and silver give you portability and liquidity that real estate don't have and um, still a tangible asset. So they, they complement each other. It's all part of diversifying and protecting your assets. Um, still, you know, there's still capital gains tax, but it's, um, it's something that's going to be safe and it's going to grow with inflation and not, you know, you're not going to lose purchasing power like you will on your cash and, and all of that. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think all this stuff is super interesting and I'm trying to figure out too, like, mm -hmm. so, I mean, buying it as an investment, I know one of the things that you've mentioned or that I've heard about in the media mm -hmm. is that, you know, you can now start to uh, buy ostensibly buy precious metals, even if you don't take physical holding of them and put them into mm -hmm. IRAs and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, used to do that. How does, yeah. How does that stuff work? So for example, I'm self-employed. I have an S, uh, SEP IRA, mm -hmm. you know, through some brokerage or whatever, like, I, I mean, how mm -hmm. do I allocate resources into something like this? Yeah, we, we've actually been doing precious metals IRAs for decades. I think they were allowed by legislation in the mid eighties. And uh, so we've, we've had experience with these for a long, long time. There's a handful of, IRA custodians out there that do alternative assets and, you know, one of them being precious metals, they'll let you buy physical precious metals with your IRA money and store it at a depository. It does have to be stored. You can't take it at home or that's like a IRA distribution, a taxable distribution. Uh, but if you have a SEP IRA or if someone has an old 401k that they want to roll to an IRA, we can set up a precious metals IRA. You can use those retirement funds to buy physical gold and silver and you're not having to take it out and pay taxes on that money in order to buy gold and silver. It's, it's, you know, owned by your IRA. So that's also a great way to do it. You get the tax benefit. Um, if anyone has a Roth IRA, that's the best way to do it. I really think silver is extremely undervalued and could very well go up five times in price if it sort of does an average job historically and potentially 10 times in price from here if it does what it did in the 1970s, again, today in today's dollars. So having those kind of gains in a Roth IRA where you don't pay the capital gains tax or the income tax on it, then you're just killing it. Then you're really um, taking advantage of the very few opportunities we have that, that the government still allows. Yeah. It's no, it, well, and so how does that work? Or I, I guess not really, how does that work? But historically speaking, I mean, you, you, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned like these bumps of in value, like in the seventies mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, we may be on the precipice of another one, even though it feels like these are one of those things that people just kind of say, you know, that you can always mm -hmm. kind of count on metal going up. 
-hmm. How does like a, a precious metals IRA, you know, stack up against sort of a traditional IRA, let's say invested in, in the stock market. So mm -hmm. let's be generous and say they're getting an 8%, you know, every mm -hmm. year, which is probably yeah, a little generous. generous. <laughs> and uh, well, let's call it six then. But like, so, it, but it, you know, if you're, if you're growing an IRA or you're growing your mm -hmm. 401k, like in a traditional manner, we'll say, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, versus if I had done the same thing, but I just took my retirement earning or savings and put it into this, um, you know, precious mm -hmm. metals IRA, yeah. you know, at retirement, you know, I guess who's, who's likely to be in the better position. I mean, does, I, I guess, do precious metals compound and things like that the same way stocks do? Well, the, the precious metals grow in price. Um, they appreciate. So think of it again, like a house, like a tangible asset. You, you expect to sell that in the future at a higher price. With, with your gold and silver, I would expect that at some point in the future, you're going to sell it at a higher price and get more cash than you paid for it. And then hopefully put that into some other undervalued asset and, and keep growing it. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's an asset that, that appreciates in value. So, you know, again, the last 20 years, gold has gone up eight times in price. So at most points that you've bought gold in the last 20 years, you know, and had it in an IRA, it's done well for you. You know, we had a peak in 2011 that we're just now getting past again and starting to go beyond. So except for buying and 2011, 2012, most other times you're done well and you're up on your gold. And really over the last 20 years, gold and silver have outperformed the stock market, but you can always pick and choose timeframes to look at. So if you bought stocks in 2009 at the low after the great financial crash, then from there they've outperformed gold. Most other times they've you know not really outperformed or gold has outperformed stocks. So Having that, uh, again, to diversify your wealth, um, not saying, you know, really pick gold over stocks. It's just have at least some exposure to precious metals because they are doing well and they are poised to continue to do well. Uh, stocks may be at an exhaustion point here at some point. They're way overvalued. They've just been pushed up by money printing from the Fed. At some point, they've got to have kind of a big crash and that bubble is going to pop. So, you know, no one can pick the top. That's coming at some point. Metals are not due for a crash. Metals are due for the opposite. They've got to run up and, and catch up to all the money we've printed. So they're going to be a, a safe thing to own and something that's poised for growth. Um, you know, not saying don't own stocks, but stocks, you probably got to know how to read the charts and trade them or hire someone who does. And the buy and hold strategy, not a good idea right now. Um, don't, don't set it and forget it right now. That's not going to work in these markets. Yeah. So if you... If you do invest in gold or mm. silver in that form, how liquid is it? Can you get it tomorrow if you need it, or are you stuck on it for a while if you need to, to pull it out? Very liquid. Gold and silver are one of the most liquid assets on the planet. You can sell it any day of the week. It always has a buyer, and you can turn it into cash. Never going to sit. Never going to sit on the market. Never going to not have a buyer. Not like a mutual fund that maybe they need some time to unwind it. Not like... You know, maybe if you have a house in the wrong place and it sits on the market for six months. Um, nope, gold and silver, you can sell any day of the week. There's always a buyer for it. Um, there's a very liquid market all around the world. I mean, heck, half the demand for gold comes from India and China. So it doesn't even matter if the U.S. is asleep at the wheel, which we are, which most people are just, they don't get it. They don't realize they're being uh, stolen from through inflation. Um, but it doesn't even matter. There's a global market for gold that is always moving. So um, you can sell it anytime, turn it into cash. You can take delivery of it from your IRA if you wanted. You know, you pay the income tax, but you can just take possession of your gold if you wanted. So it's 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 easy to get. So, so to tack oh. on to, to sort of what Mike was asking, I mean, in, in terms of your IRA, if you're investing mm -hmm. in the IRA, let's say, I, I'm thinking of, of investing in like a traditional way, like the way that, you know, you contribute a little out of every paycheck to your mm -hmm. 401k, for example. Mm -hmm. um, with a precious metals IRA, are you able to sort of buy in fractionally versus like, uh, you know, my, my, ver my small potatoes version of buying silver was like, well, mm -hmm. I can only buy this silver bar when I have 14, you know, $1,500 to buy the 10 ounce mm -hmm. bar or whatever. Like, but until yep. then I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's kind of this bar that I have to reach in order to actually make a purchase and get into it. Right. Yeah. So with, with an IRA, for example, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the, there's probably not a, perfect fit for this, but you know, let's say you've got $500 coming out of each check, mm -hmm. you know, it's not enough to buy an ounce. It's not enough to buy, you know, I, d I don't know how tiny they go with these things. You, can, you know, I don't know yeah, if you can I mean, buy you... a gold flake somewhere, but like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, is, does the money sort of move in like the same way that like, you know, digital 
currency transfer works. Like mm-hmm. I'm sort of giving you $10,000, let's say, and you've got that. And there's almost like a promissory tie to some gold asset that's really there. Mm-hmm. But like, if I gave you another hundred dollars, like I would just own a hundred more dollars in gold versus like, I have to wait until I hit the next $2,000 threshold or something to buy another bar. Mm-hmm. Like, does that make sense? I don't, I don't know if I'm explaining that. It, very well, it, but. It, it, it makes sense, Ryan. Yeah. So, you know, as far as that, um, when you were talking earlier about that ounce of gold being up oh, $2,500, that's, that's getting kind of high. Um, there are fraction, uh, fractional coins you can get. There are one tenth ounce, one quarter ounce gold coins. So if you want to spend $500 on gold, you can do that. Um, I still think silver is the better buy right now. And it's going to make a bigger move and you can buy an ounce of silver for, you know, $33, $34 at the moment. We'll see, you know, where it goes from here, but you can certainly buy a number of ounces of silver if you're just putting in a few hundred dollars at a time. And I would say just stack up the silver. So, you know, generally if someone has some cash they want to protect, if they have an IRA to roll over, great, get a foundation in, in precious metals. Um, but if someone's adding a little bit at a time, sure. If you do a precious metals IRA, they can do a automatic contribution from your bank account. You can put in a hundred dollars every paycheck or whatever you want to do and keep adding to it until you get to that maximum yearly contribution, you know, and you said you have a SEP IRA. That's great. SEP IRAs usually have a higher contribution limit than a normal IRA does. So, you know, you have more room to, to, um, put income aside, not have to pay tax on it um, yet and, and have it, have it invested, but um, small amounts, even outside of an IRA, someone can send us $500 and I'll send you some silver. So just whatever you can do to start protecting your wealth and, and getting something tangible stacked away. Great. Um, can you tell us about, uh, is it McAlvany, the uh, company McElvaney. you work for? Yep. McAlvany. Yep. Um, what do they specialize in? Why would you pick them over someone else? Um, what's your role in there? Really, really good question, Mike. Yeah, McIlvaney Precious Metals. We've been around over 50 years. We were started in 1972, so 52 years now. Uh, family-owned company, passed down from father to son. So you've got a lot of longevity there, a lot of experience in these markets. And we tend to put relationship first over the transaction. So we're trying to help folks. We're trying to educate and explain the strategies and let them know why to own precious metals and how best to do it and just build long-term relationships with our clients. And that tends to stand out in these markets. There's a lot of gold companies out there where you see them advertised on Fox News or on the internet, and that's expensive and you're going to end up paying more or getting talked into a higher priced coin to, to help them pay for that. And it's about the transaction. It's not about the relationship. So we do stand out a little bit as far as um, helping folks, you know, being on the low end of the spectrum as far as price and trying to uh, over the long term help people make the most of owning precious metals and have been doing this for decades. Um, and I've been a, a senior advisor here for a number of years, been working here for 14 years. So I know these markets, I know these cycles, um, studied the history of, of precious metals and um, just economics and, and just what happens in, in these different kind of scenarios we go through. So, you know, it's more about educating folks, helping them to understand what they're doing and why and how this is going to benefit and, and where it's going from here. Um, even looking at the price charts and um, just seeing where, where is this really going? What, what do we expect from here? Is, uh, is gold and silver the only commodities you guys deal in? Do you sell other materials mm-hmm. as far as like, I don't know, copper or lithium, you know, like right now, you no. know what I mean? Like, okay. No. All so, right. so Matt, so McIlvaney, we've got two companies, McIlvaney precious metals does precious metals, which is mainly gold and silver. Um, sometimes a little bit of either platinum or palladium, uh, but that's it. Anything beyond that, you're getting into industrial metals where you don't actually want to own it or hold it. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense to gold and silver are the precious metals. They are the ones that are money, um, that you do want to hold on to that are a form of wealth. Um, so there's that. And then in addition to precious metals, we've got, um, uh, McIlvaney wealth management. So we do help folks with the paper side of things. If they have a stock and bond portfolio, they want to manage. It's just, we still favor t- tangible assets. That's where maybe you would find um, some of the resources you're talking about. We're going to look at wanting to buy um, mining companies, buy real estate, uh, specialty real estate, things where there's something real. And maybe it is a mining company that does lithium or copper. Um, We're going to focus on things that are real, not buying 
Facebook or Google. So mm -hmm. um, still tangible assets, but yeah, the wealth management team can do the paper side and then the precious metals team can help with just getting that, that main foundation where it's money you can put your hands on that has intrinsic value. So. So I wanted to uh, keep going on this uh, mm -hmm. sort of retirement plan angle. So yeah. in the event you've got, you know, some amount of your, your portfolio mm -hmm. is in precious metals. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to time to start drawing against that, like how is that done in a way that is, is the most efficient or e efficient, I guess. So, mm -hmm. you know, are you, are you literally selling assets and drawing against that? Are you borrowing money against this stored asset and then living off sort of the borrowed? In, you know, like what, what are the strategies for, for retirement yeah, around this? It's really not any different than any other IRA. I, I don't think anyone's ever going to borrow against their IRA to live off of that. You have your IRA savings um, saved up. At some point, you may pull money from that to supplement your income. So if you have a retirement account in stocks, your broker would have to liquidate some of your stocks and send you a check for the cash from that IRA. And it's a taxable distribution. You'll pay some taxes on it, but you're pulling money out as you need it. Really not different with the precious metals IRA. It's still an IRA. There's an asset in there. Uh, we can liquidate any ounces of gold and silver that the IRA owns at the depository if you need cash and you can pull out the cash. So um, still, still very simple. We can still help with that. One unique thing about the precious metals IRA is you can take uh, a distribution in kind, meaning you can have the gold or silver sent to you. Uh, with with anything else, any other IRA, you don't get your stock or bond or anything else sent to you. You don't get a certificate. They just it either sits there or they sell it and send you the cash. Uh, with the metals IRA, there's actual gold and silver that we buy and is delivered to the depository for that IRA. It's sitting there, so you can sell it if you need the cash, but you can also pull that gold out. You know, if you get to the point where you're like, eh, I want that in hand. Uh, I don't want it in the IRA anymore, but I don't need the cash. I have other income. You can have some of that gold or silver shipped to you, pay the tax on it. And you don't have to sell it. You just take that gold that you already own and, and they ship it to you. So kind of unique that way where you can actually take that that asset and hold it. So, so when if, you take it and hold it, though, does it come off your IRAs uh, mm -hmm. like sheet? So now all of a sudden you own that inventory, mm -hmm. but it's not being mm -hmm. accounted for as part of your IRA anymore? Correct. Correct. What I'm talking about is an IRA distribution, which would be a taxable distribution. It's just the unique factor is you can do that. You don't have to sell your gold. You already bought it in the IRA, say, years ago, and you could take it out and take possession of it if you wanted it. Whereas pretty much anything else you own in the IRA, it's not something you can take possession of. Uh, but, but gold and silver, you can do a cash distribution or an in-kind distribution and take the gold and silver itself and, and have it in your hand. So I, I think the way it works, I'm I'm not really old enough to have to think about this yet, but I, I'm kind of thinking about it. Like, uh, it your tax bracket and your tax rate all depends mm -hmm. on how much you pull out each year, right? So if you pull out mm -hmm. more than a certain amount, they put you at a higher tax rate because you're pulling that much out, right? It, it's yeah, it's just income. So you know, you yeah. make income during the year if you pull money out of your IRA. Um, it adds if you're and your past penalty age, it just adds to your income, and then you, you know, that wherever you end up on taxes with that much money. Okay. So in the long run, it's better mm -hmm. to buy and hold yourself because you're not, not necessarily. It depends. Um, it, it depends. A retirement account can be a great way to own gold and silver. A Roth is a very great way. And it really just depends on, on what someone has. You know, if someone's got cash in the bank and no IRAs and they want to protect it. Yeah buy some gold and silver and, and hang on to it, put it in a safe place. If someone doesn't have any cash savings or they've got kids going to college, they're spending money, you know, but they've got an old 401k from a previous job. Well, yeah, roll that into an IRA and that gives you a vehicle and a means to get some exposure to gold and silver. So really, really just uh, depends on someone's circumstance and what they need. But any of those ways, either taking possession or having an IRA have their advantages and they, they can be great vehicles. So. Okay. Um, at the, the top of the show, you mentioned something about arbitrage being a strategy mm -hmm. for, you know, mm -hmm. increasing your ounceage without, you know, maybe even having to pay for it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could spend a few minutes sort of exploring that idea of just, I mean, I think people have at least some notion of what, <laughs> you know, these different arbitrage strategies are like when it comes to buying and selling homes and things mm -hmm. like that. But I wonder yeah. if you'd sort of explain how it works in precious metals and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if there's in fact a way to, uh, to sort of increase your holdings without a lot of extra expense. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely a way. So I, I appreciate you bringing that back up. And, and it kind of goes back to Mike's question about what sets us apart, why work with us. Um, there's very few companies that, uh, that do these kind of strategies. I don't know that really anyone else does. And there's one other place I know does, and they learned it from us. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, part of what sets us apart is to have sort of a dynamic play with precious metals. So instead of just, mm. you know, buy gold, bury it in the backyard and wait for the end of the world, it's like, no, this is an investment. You know, there's reasons to own it. It's, it's tangible, it's inflation proof. But within that, there are dynamics in the precious metals market that change over time. So gold and silver, they don't go up at exactly the same pace over time. They will tend to outperform each other and take turns going back and forth. Sometimes silver shoots up and outperforms gold for a season. And then sometimes gold will hold up better when they're both going down and gold will outperform silver for a season. So we can track this. Uh, we can look at the, the price ratio, the relationship between gold and silver. We can plot it on a chart and track it over time. And you know what? It's very predictable and very cyclical. So we can say, oh, you want to buy gold and silver right now? Let's see. Buy more silver right now. And then when that cycle changes, we let our clients know, hey, now's a good time to trade some of your silver for gold. And you get uh, some extra gold more than you could have bought originally. So um, we try to get people on the right side of the cycle and we stay with our clients, have that long-term relationship. And when there's a change to make that they can benefit from, we let them know. So, um, you know, when there's that arbitrage, hope oh, silver is outperformed. Let's see here, based on where you started. Oh yeah, you can get 80% more gold for your silver than if you had bought gold when you started. Big, big gains. They're usually years apart, but they're big enough moves to have big double digit percentage gains in ounces and, and get free ounces like that. So we'll we'll help people take advantage of that. And it's not all one or the other. It's not like, all right, let's sell all our silver and go into gold. Let's sell all our gold and go into silver. We'll maybe be heavier one or the other and take a portion of our position and move it one way or the other because we don't know the future perfectly. But when we hit some of these trigger points, we can readjust, you know, and be heavier one or the other. And with whatever we're trading, get free ounces. So I've done this, I've done this myself. Um, one of the trades that, that we've been able to do is, is premium trades where there's an extra premium on a certain product. So um, anyone that might be somewhat familiar with, with precious metals, um, silver Eagles from the U S mint a couple years ago had a huge premium. The market was paying 40, 50% over spot for these coins because of demand and because of people wanting these. And there was just, there was just this season where they were just going crazy. It was ridiculous. So selling them, I wouldn't sell them at, at that time. I would tell people don't buy them. They're too expensive. But when the market premium got up high enough, it was like, Hey, we can trade these and get more ounces of something else. The market is paying a huge premium for silver Eagles. Let's sell them and go into silver bars and get 40% more ounces than you had before. And so we were doing that for clients. I did that myself. I took a bunch of uh, silver eagles that I had and some other coins that had a premium. I took 1,400 ounces of silver, no, 1,300, um, and turned it into 1,700 ounces of silver. I pocketed 400 ounces of free silver because... I sold some at a premium, bought some bars that had no premium and just got extra ounces and got 400 free ounces of silver. So I've done this myself, helped clients do this. Um, and whenever we see an opportunity like that, if one product is more than another, we'll trade that premium. If gold moves against silver, we'll trade and, and get more ounces of one or the other. So it's a dynamic play. Over time, your precious metals position can grow and get bigger. Your pile can get bigger with free ounces um, as we um, hit these points. So that's, I wonder, um, you know, in, in sort of the spirit of that, I mean, it sounds, mm -hmm. at least to me, knowing nothing, it sounds labor intensive, right? This sounds mm -hmm. like a lot of work. <laughs> and so um, in terms of like working it's with you guys really. in, in terms of managing mm -hmm. this stuff, right? I mean, like if mm -hmm. I had to sit here at my computer and try and play this little arbitrage game, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't be that successful. But I mean, do we have to be like multimillionaires with you to make it work out? Or like, I mean, is this the kind of thing that you can start doing, you know, early in your investing and mm -hmm. sort of, you know, watch it grow over time? I mean, you know, through careful selection, you know, by working with somebody like you, mm -hmm. um, I mean, do we have a close enough relationship that, you know, you're moving things around sort of on autopilot or, I mean, like how much goes into actually trying to facilitate this arbitrage, you know, uh, for somebody who's non-expert, you know, basically yeah. meaning we're relying on you or somebody on your mm -hmm. team to, to yeah, help us not, through that. 
not a lot of work. So for someone like you, Ryan, if you're the client, if you're my client, you don't have to do a lot of work. You're going to hear from me and I'll let you know when to make any changes in your portfolio, when there's opportunities to take advantage of. Um, you'll tend to hear from me fairly often as far as getting email updates or, or maybe a call once a year, just so you know what the market's doing and where things are heading. But when we hit a point uh, where, oh, there's here's a really good trade here. Oh, Ryan has that product. He can get this many more free ounces. You're going to get a call and email from me. I'm going to explain to you how it works. And it's just a matter of if you want to do it or not. And, you know, usually it's a it's a no brainer. So not a lot of work on your part. Um, you're working with us because we're we're going to be that long term advisor for you. We're going to let you know when to make changes and help you make the most of owning precious metals as an investment. So. Well, and so I guess as a add on to that, like how mm -hmm. little is too little? Like, I mean, if somebody comes to you and they want to get started, like, I mean, do they need to, you know, bring, you know, a $20,000 initial investment or can they start with 500 bucks or like where, where can somebody begin working with you guys? Um, you know, I usually tend to say 500 to a thousand dollars just to make the shipping cost worthwhile. You're going to have to pay, you know, uh, the insured shipping cost to have some coins sent to you. So don't buy a silver coin and pay just as much in shipping. That, that doesn't make sense, but yeah, $500, a thousand dollars. I'm happy to help folks get started. Really? Honestly, I, I just want to help folks and, and, and help people do this. So I have had the same conversation back to back with someone with a million dollars and someone with a thousand dollars. And it's just, I'm going to tell everyone the same thing, go through the same strategy, spend the same amount of time and whatever someone has, 10,000, 100,000, doesn't matter. Whatever you want to put into precious metals, we'll help you do it the best way. So yeah, if it's, if it's 500, then we'll start getting some silver and, and uh, keep building from there. So it also to that end, can you help with like account migration? Maybe they want to take a traditional IRA and move mm -hmm. it over to a precious metals IRA or yep. maybe, you know, figure out how to allocate money that would otherwise go into a 401k, mm -hmm. you know, a, through somebody's payroll system or something like, is there a way to make contributions into, into mm -hmm. another platform or whatever you yep. guys are using? Yep. Yep. Absolute. Uh, uh, absolutely. I can help with that. And yeah, I will have a very hands-on um, approach to, helping folks. If they're not sure how to do something, you know, it's, it's not like I'm going to say, Oh, get back to me when you're ready or when you have the money. It's like, no, I'm, I'm going to help you with every step of the process and help you figure things out. If, uh, if you need that. Yeah. I know like even so, just in my own case, like trying to move 401ks and IRAs from old jobs and things, you know, has been really confusing. And if you screw it up, then you have to pay taxes on it or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, it's like yeah. so having somebody actually help you through the process is uh, I think pretty critical. Yep. Yep. Well, so, that's what I'm here for. What kind of um, fee structure are you charging for your amazing services? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, we tend to be on the low end of the spectrum when it comes to buying precious metals. So um, with silver, I mean, you're going to pay 2 to $3 over spot, uh, depending on what size of bar or coin you get. And that's about as cheap as you can buy online, cheaper than some of the big websites out there for buying silver. Um, so really not that much. Um, we're, we're just going to be about about as cheap as you can get anywhere. We're not charging a bunch extra like some places are. So, And what and about folks trend. like me that it's, uh, you know, all the silver I have is the same brand because it's cool <laughs> looking and they all look cool together. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, so I've got a very non-diverse group of silver bars because I've got the mm -hmm. one ounces and the five ounces and the 10 ounces, but they're all the same. Mm -hmm. I think it's called yeah. sunshine minting or something like mm -hmm. that. They just make a cool yeah. one and, They've got like a yeah. little uh, thing on the back <laughs> that you can put this little card over and, you know, see that it's authentic or whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They got, they got me with all the marketing. Right. So, yeah. uh, I mean, so what about, you know, folks like that? Like, I mean, do you help, I mean, to your point about arbitrage, right. If, if everything mm -hmm. is the same, then there's no real room for arbitrage unless sunshine minting gets real hot for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is there uh, I mean, so in your case, are you guys helping diversify? Are you buying ugly bars and cheap bars mm -hmm. and expensive bars and you know, all that stuff mm -hmm. at the same time or. You know, what's the strategy around that? No, I wouldn't get into all that with precious metals. Um, it, it, it's not really that complicated. You don't have to necessarily diversify your brands or, or type of uh, uh, of product like that. Um, I like Sunshine Mint. They're up in Idaho. They make a good product. Um, we get that. We get some bars and coins from other various um, mints and refiners that are reputable. Um, so there's 
Asahi in Salt Lake City. Uh, it used to be Inglehart in the 80s, but long time reputable refiner. I mean, there's just there's a bunch out there where you get good product. Doesn't really matter. The thing you don't want to do is is go online to some of these websites and get you know the the Aztec coins or the Marvel <laughs> coins or whatever, and you're paying extra for the design and everything. And it's like that doesn't matter. Just get you know reputable brand own ounces and we'll get whatever's most available at the time. We're not going to necessarily pick or choose, uh, you know, brands or mints like that. It's just a matter of owning the right mix of gold and silver, um, getting as many ounces as you can and getting set up for the strategy and then, you know, where you want to store it and that sort of thing. But um, doesn't have to get more complicated than that. We'll, we'll take care of getting you um, good quality product and then we will always buy it back if you ever need to liquidate it. So, Say, for example, grandma passes away and you inherit a bunch mm -hmm. of uh, gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Do you guys go through the process of helping the client figure out what mm -hmm. that collection would be worth as far as like, not yeah, necessarily definitely. just on the weight value, but also, you know, the random coin that could be worth mm -hmm. three times what normal is? Yes. Yeah. We are very helpful in that sense. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we are a full service precious metals brokerage. We buy and sell. If you didn't buy from us, we can still buy back something else you might have. And then, yeah, I've, I've helped folks identify stuff, value stuff. If they've got an inheritance or, or an estate or something, um, yeah, then we'll go through and, and do that. And I work with clients all over the country. So someone can email me pictures and say, oh yeah, here's, here's what we got from so-and-so. Oh, okay. Yep. You have, you know, this many ounces of gold and silver. Here's what it's worth. You know, that coin, that's special. Let's let's grade that. Let's look into that further. You know, whatever it is. But yeah, we can actually absolutely help folks with uh, with with anything regarding precious metals. Mm, really cool. Is mm -hmm. there anything that we maybe have not touched on? A topic that is important that we haven't asked the right question to yet. <laughs> you know, I think you guys have done pretty good, um, you know, talking about like you were asking about price, talking about ratio trading, and then just all the reasons why to own it. Um, I think you guys have done a really good job. The, the only other thing I would mention again is just that gold and silver are undervalued and are going much higher from here over the next few years. And if we were to do some uh, some technicals and look at the price charts, uh, gold going over 2100 was a major ceiling that it crossed back in mm -hmm. March. We are on a new big uptrend. It's not going to wait for us anymore. You're not, you're not going to be uh, saying, oh, let me just kind of wait and see what it does. It's like, no, it's going to leave you behind at this point. Um, you know, that was back in March and it's already almost 2,500. So it's, it's not waiting for us anymore. We're on another extended uptrend. Uh, same with silver on the price charts. Once it crossed 30, that was a major ceiling. You know, it's still kind of going sideways and working itself out, but you know, it's going to go to 50 and beyond in the near future now that it's at this point um, and make, yeah, you know, that's a pretty big move percentage wise, uh, but that's what's coming. That's what the, the technicals and the price charts and the market uh, price action is indicating to us. So just know that um, time is short, you know, last few years, it's gone sideways. Great. You know, um, build a precious metals position. Now it's not waiting for us anymore. Well, thank Great. you so much. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to tell people where they can get in touch with you, how they can contact you if they want to mm -hmm. work with you? Yeah, absolutely. Really just my phone number. You know, if you put that in the notes, my direct number is 970-459-4611. Uh, you can call or text me at that number. And I like to just work with folks directly and communicate and kind of help uh, figure out what works best for you and tailor the strategy for you. So again, 970-459-4611. Great. Perfect. And the, uh, the website is McIlvaney Precious Metals. It's McIlvaney.com. Uh, I suppose you can learn just about anything you need to learn mm -hmm. there about working with you guys or working with with McIlvaney to uh, get into investing mm -hmm. in precious metals. Yep. There's a lot of education, a lot of market news on our website. Um, and you can, again, call me directly. There's other advisors at our company or go to McIlvaney.com forward slash Michael and you can put in your info there. Um, and then otherwise, yeah, wealth of resources on our website and uh, um, kind of a different, different approach, different kind of, kind of long-term approach um, to precious metals, not just strictly transactional. Yeah, oh, I love, love it. it. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Michael. We really appreciate your time. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks for all the good questions. So really appreciate it. Absolutely. And thanks no so much to everybody who tunes into the show this week and every week. We'll see you guys next time.